and privileged today on behalf of the Commission members to submit the report of an inquiry on tax evasion and other corrupt practices. The report consists of three volumes. Volume 1 represents the report proper. Volume 2 consists of records of proceedings. Volume 3 consists of list of exhibits referred to in the report and the reassessment worksheet of selected taxpayers. It is important to note that the exhibits referred to in this report are contained in three metal filing cabinets which would be handed over to the Honorable Attorney General at a later date. The document attached to Volume 3 of the report is an index and reference to the documents marked as exhibits referred to in this report. Your Excellency, Mr. President, before I proceed further, please allow me, on behalf of Commission members, to express our sincere gratitude for the confidence bestowed upon us to carry out this assignment. We feel humbled and honored to have embarked on this national assignment in the interest of the state and the public as a whole. We thank you, Your Excellency, for your foresight and wisdom in establishing this commission. I shall now proceed on to the formation of this commission. Distinguished cabinet members, on the 28th day of October 2011, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, in accordance with Section 200 of the 1997 Constitution of the Gambia, established by legal instrument contained in Legal Notice Number 27 of 2011, a Commission of Inquiry into Tax Evasion and Other Corrupt Practices for Accountants, Legal Practitioners, Engineers, Medical Practitioners, companies and private persons and institutions required to pay tax to the Gambia Revenue Authority. The commission consisted of the following commissioners who duly took their oath of office before commencing work. Justice Mama Fatima Singate, Chairperson of the Commission, Mr. John S. L. Gomez, Commissioner, Mr. Mumudu Sabali, Commissioner, he replaced Mrs. Musukeba Kor. The mandate of the commission. The period under inquiry of this commission in the exercise of its mandate was from 1999 to 2011 December. Section 3 of the Legal Notice number 27 of 2011 authorized the commission to inter alia inquire into the incidence and dimension of tax evasion and avoidance, ascertain the extent of loss of public revenue resulting from capital gains tax, personal income tax, sales tax, and to determine the role of individuals groups and professional bodies in the evasion and avoidance of tax. The scope of the inquiry was very wide and covered all aspects of tax evasion, specifically income, sales, PAYE and capital gains taxes, issuance of dot checks and other corrupt practices. The commission was required by law to conclude within three months of its first sitting, but could be on it beyond that period if it was in its opinion necessary to do so. The Commission exceeded its three months mandate and sought and gave approval for a one month extension to conclude its inquiry. The Commission inquired into the tax obligation of legal practitioners, accountants, medical practitioners, construction companies, GSM companies, hotels, and other types of companies and businesses, all of whom are mandated by law to pay tax. The Commission also inquired into and conducted a desk review of randomly selected transaction of sale of land to determine whether capital gains tax was paid on the property disposed of. In a bid to fulfill its mandate on the, on the aspect of issuance of dot checks, the Commission also inquired into the level of practice of issuing dot checks, but limited itself, given the magnitude of the scope of this area, to dot checks issued in the payment of taxes and those checks issued to GRA domestic tax. The inquiry led to the subpoena of audit report following an audited, auditing exercise conducted by the National Audit Office on this issue. Logistics. An office space was allocated to the commission housed at the Attorney General's Chambers and Ministry of Justice. The commission was allocated a vehicle, a computer, seven filing cabinets, stationery and fuel coupons, all of which were provided to assist the Commission in its work. 
All the meetings were held in the chambers of the presiding chairperson. The other commissioners, however, made good use of the office space provided by the Ministry of Justice. Other than the three commissioners appointed by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, the commission was assigned two counsel to the commission in the persons of Mr. Maurice Aguia and Mr. D. Binga. A secretary to the commission was also appointed in the person of Mrs. Amijara, who was later replaced by Ms. Maria Manjai. In addition to the lawyers and the secretary, the following security personnel were also assigned to the commission. Mr. Sukuta Jame, Delo Balde, who was replaced by Officer Dabo, Inspector Momodulamin Korta, Sali Funyang, and Musa Andur. The commission also co-opted some judiciary staff in the persons of Mrs. Hadi Sise, confidential secretary, Mr. Pate So, registrar, Ms. Hadi Job, assistant registrar, Mr. Lamin Jiba, process server, Mr. Harun Amani and Ms. Hadi Jain as court e-reporters and transcribers, and commission driver Asansane, all of whom formed the administrative staff of the commission. Two other staff from the GRA were co-opted in the persons of Famaraki Sane and Suleindur for technical assistance. These persons worked tirelessly in the execution of their duties. The commission could not have asked for a better support staff. We commend and thank them most sincerely. Methodology. Thank you. Methodology. The Commission calls public announcements to be made in the national newspapers and news radio and television services for members of the public to come forward for any information on tax evasion and other corrupt practices by submitting a memorandum related thereto. The Commission receives 12 written memoranda and petitions. Some members of the public approach the Commission in person, either discreetly or otherwise. The Commission wrote to the Gambia Revenue Authority, hereinafter referred to as GRE, to provide this Commission with records of named taxpayers. Some files were provided to the Commission, but the records show poor record keeping. There was, in fact, limited or no evidence of payment of taxes in these files. The Commission then wrote to the following institution for the list of their memberships the General Legal Council for Legal Practitioners, the Medical and Dental Council for Medical Practitioners, the Gambia Association of Accountants for Accountants, the Gambia Public Procurement Authority and GAM Works Agencies for Contractors and Engineers, the Registrar of Companies for Companies, the Gambia Hotel Association for Hotels and Guest Houses, to name a few. A list was then prepared from the information received from the aforementioned institutions, and summons were issued to listed persons, institutions, and companies to appear before the Commission. It must be emphasized that said list was prepared on a purely impartial basis. This was not a witch hunting exercise. The Commission deliberately refrained from specifically identifying persons, businesses, and institutions. It relied purely on information received from the above mentioned institutions within the, the, within the basis of its mandate. Given the little or no evidence of payment of taxes in the files provided by GRE, the Commission adopted a procedure whereby taxpayers were summoned to appear and make available evidence of payment of their taxes, most particularly income, sales, PAYE, and capital gains tax. Initially, the Commission had also required practitioner witnesses to provide evidence of private practitioner fees. One such witness brought, to evidence, brought evidence to show that said laws which required the payment of practitioner fees had been repealed. This particular request was, as a result, discontinued after this fact was verified. It must be noted that after receiving evidence from the first group of taxpayers who appeared before the Commission, i.e. the lawyers, the Commission found that some were not up to date with the payment of their taxes, and some had not paid at all, but had undertaken to pay up, and given the limited time the Commission had to work under, it was almost impossible to verify said payment. The Commission, as a result, decided to adopt an approach of ordering the taxpayers with arrears to return to GRE to pay up said arrears or agree on a payment plan and return to the Commission with evidence thereof. Failure to do so would amount to contempt. This approach yielded positive result and an influx of payment of taxes. The Commission received a number of memoranda and petitions on allegation of tax evasion and corrupt practices. Most petitioners wanted to remain anonymous. Some members of the public approached the Commission, 
personally, some prefer to remain anonymous, others did not mind coming forward in the open. The members of the commission looked at every petition and where, where necessary directed the security personnel to conduct investigations and submit their reports to the chairperson. Most of the allegations made by the petition bore no fruit. Shortcomings. At the initial stage of this inquiry, the Commission experienced a number of shortcomings which obstructed the proper implementation of its mandate to its full extent. In order to ascertain the level of loss of revenue due to tax evasion, the Commission subpoenaed the files of named taxpayers from the GRA. This exposed a number of anomalies within the GRA in terms of proper record keeping, poor tax administration, gross incompetence and negligence. As a result of these shortcomings, the Commission adopted the approach of requiring taxpayers to provide evidence of their payment of taxes. This resulted to a lot of time wasted on the part of the Commission in obtaining the relevant records from the taxpayers themselves. Further, after receiving all the requested information from taxpayers, the Commission requested the GRA senior officials, particularly the Commissioner General and Commissioner Domestic Tax, to conduct a reassessment on income, sales and PAY taxes, tax payments of selected taxpayers based on the evidence they had presented. The outcome again was unfortunate, as it again exposed the gross incompetence and poor management and tax administration skills on the part of these specific officials. As a result, the Commission had to co-opt two junior tax officials to assist and be supervised by its commissioners in the conduct, conduct of this exercise. This resulted to even more delay and a diversion from the main mandate of this commission. Your Excellency, these two junior tax officials who were recruited are in the persons of Sule Nur and Famarasane. Yeah. Yes, they're present. <laughs> Nevertheless, the commission succeeded to proceed on course and continued with its inquiry on, into capital gains tax. Again, the poor record keeping made the task of the commission even more arduous. The Commission also encountered difficulties from witnesses someone to appear before it. Most of them were not forthcoming with information and unwilling to assist the Commission with its inquiries, most especially during the inquiry into capital gains tax evasion. Therefore, given the limited time that remained within the time frame set for this Commission, the Commission decided to limit the scope of its inquiry on dot checks to checks issued in payment of domestic taxes that were returned unpaid. unpaid. Incidentally, the National Audit Office had commenced an audit exercise on GRA on that subject matter. The Commission then subpoenaed the Auditor, Ger Auditor General for the production of his report, which was considered and incorporated into this report. As a result of this, and given the little available data, the Commission's inquiry did not extend to how the issuance of DOT checks affected foreign direct in investment. Mischief sought to be cured. To our mind, the mischief sought to be cured by the setting up of this commission is to ensure that the problem of tax evasion is greatly reduced, if not completely eradicated or eliminated. Further, by understanding the role played by each sector of society in causing loss of public revenue through tax evasion and other corrupt practices, the proper mode of addressing this problem would be determined. Therefore, to better address this exercise, there was a need to have a thorough understanding of the structures in place that collect public revenue. For a better understanding of these structures and their role in revenue collection in the Gambia, one had to understand that the government of the Gambia derives its revenue for sustaining the economy, mainly from income generating from taxes. Simply put, Gambia has a tax-driven economy. Tax, according to Black's Law Dictionary 9th edition, is a charge usually monetary imposed by government on persons, entities, transactions, or property to yield public revenue. Most broadly, the term embraces all governmental imposition on the persons, property, privileges, occupations, and enjoyment of the people, and includes duties, imports and excises, end of quote. The Chamber's Dictionary 11th edition defined, defines tax as a contribution to revenue exacted by the state from individuals or businesses. Taxation, therefore, is the imposition or assessment of tax. 
It is, according to Black's Law Dictionary, the means by which the state obtains revenue required for its activities. The money provided by taxation in the Gambia, therefore, is used by the government to carry out many functions in economic development, security, infrastructure, public and social services, and most importantly, the servicing of debts and interest generated from said debts. The January 2012 press release from Central Bank of the Gambia, Gambia's Monetary Policy Committee states that in 2011, revenue and grants amounted to 5.2 billion. Tax receipts amounted to 3.7 billion dollars falling short of the expected $4.1 billion projected in the 2011 budget estimate. The revenue situation of, for 2011 compares unfavorably with the total expenditure and net lending, which stood at $6.1 billion. The mismatch between revenue and expenditure resulted in the overall budget deficit, including grants of $910 million. This dire situation of government physical performance is becoming endemic because the deficit for the year 2010 was $1.4 billion. The decline in revenue collected, collection for government over the years has led to the increased government borrowing to finance the fiscal debt. This has created the most intractable microeconomic problem the Gambia has faced in recent history a growing and unsustainable domestic debt situation that not only consume huge amount of government resources to service it, but also poses a serious risk to microeconomic stability. Estimates by the Central Bank of the Gambia highlight that, as at the end of December 2011, the outstanding domestic debt increased to $9.4 billion, or 8.6% from 2010. In 2011 alone, government paid $638.6 million, a little higher than $635.7 million paid in 2010 to service the domestic debt. It was therefore timely and necessary for the government of the Gambia, through the leadership of the President, to set up a commission of inquiry into tax evasion and other corrupt practices to gauge how this decline in revenue collection is caused by tax evasion and other corrupt practices. Under the head of corrupt practices, which runs throughout the report, the Commission was able to gauge the level of malpractices by members of the public and GRE officials. To ensure the proper performance of the systems in place for revenue collection, the Income and Sales Tax Act of 2004 was enacted and revised and amended, and it was enacted to revise and consolidated, consolidate all the laws relating to income and sales tax and all matters connected therewith. The provisions of this act are referred to throughout this report. Hearing and evidence. The hearing of the Commission of Inquiry commenced on the 5th of December 2011 and concluded on the 28th of March 2011. Between this period, over 300 witnesses appeared and reappeared before this commission on matters related to income, sales, PAYE, capital gains taxes, and issuance of DOT checks. Some appeared with evidence of payments of their taxes. Most of the hearings of the Commission of Inquiry were held in open court, covered by all the major print media in the Gambia. At the conclusion of the hearing, the commission evaluated all the evidence before it and noted that the methodology adopted by the GRA in assessing taxes or accepting taxes paid after self-assessment was flawed. In order to highlight this, the Commission then conducted a random reassessment of witnesses already called in before this Commission. For the purpose of this reassessment of income, sales, and PAYE taxes, the Commission categorized the taxpayers under the following heads. Legal practitioners, medical practitioners, hotels, insurance companies, engineers and consultants, and other companies. For legal practitioners, the Commission has reassessed 10 practitioners on the rule who appeared before the Commission. Incidentally, most of these were lawyers with the most experience of service at the bar. The rest was a random selection based on size and the evidence the Commission heard. The Commission also conducted a random reassessment of all transactions considered by this Commission on the assessment of 
capital gains tax findings. The outcome of said reassessment exposes a serious flaw in the assessment process and procedures adopted by GRA, which is depriving government of large amount of much needed revenue. In all, the Commission conducted a reassessment of only 50 income, sales, and PAY taxpayers and 14 capital gains taxpayers. These reassessments expose a great anomaly in the taxation methodology and negligence by GRA in tax administration. Specific findings. First is on the declaration. During this process of reassess reassessment, the Commission found that there were some outstanding payment due on taxes to be paid. The Commission found that selected taxpayers were wrongly assessed and therefore said taxpayers paid less tax than required. During this reassessment exercise, the Commission suspected that most of the income claimed to have been earned in any given year was greatly underdeclared. This the Commission found more prevalent with lawyers. Our methodology for reaching this conclusion is based on their seniority at the bar and the far fair market value as defined in Section 4 of the Income and Sales Tax Act of the services provided in this field. We therefore randomly reviewed the income declared of a lawyer of 16 years legal standing and compared the income declared and tax paid in any given year and found, it, found that it was more than the income declared and tax paid for a lawyer of 32 years standing at the bar on similar services. There is, however, no conclusive proof to support this other than the fair market value rule under the Income and Sales Tax Act. The Commission, however, strongly believes and firmly concludes that there is a case of serious on the declaration of income earned with a view to evade, tax on pay, evade the payment of taxes. The Commission, therefore, recommends a thorough and detailed inquiry and investigation to be conducted on this issue in order to ascertain the magnitude of underdeclaration of income by taxpayers. Two, wrong or non-assessment. On the issue of reassessment of these selected taxpayers, the Commission found that selected taxpayers were improperly assessed. Some were not even assessed. We also found that there was limited or no information on assessment of some taxpayers, particularly large taxpayers. We found that the methodology adopted by GRA to assess taxpayers is, is by assessing them based on assessable income, that is, after an allowable deduction. It is worth stating that Section 341 of the Income and Sales Tax Act provides for allowable deduction on any expenditure incurred in deriving gross income. Therefore, what the Commission found was a taxpayer would declare an income and then assess himself on an assessable income after deducting an alleged expenditure. The problem arose where no proof of expenditure is alleged is attached to support the figure reached in calculating the assessable income. It is strict law that anything alleged must be proved. Therefore, we consider that the burden rests on the taxpayer to prove any expenditure incurred to warrant an allowable deduction, and such proof must be in the form of receipts or any other form of documentation. Without that, the Commission considers that the assessable income claimed must be disregarded. It is based on this consideration, and in the absence of any proof of expenditure to warrant an allowable deduction, that the Commission proceeded to reassess the selected taxpayers on declared income. The income, the outcome of this reassessment has shown a great loss of necessary revenue for government. The total outstanding amount of tax debt of selected taxpayer reassessed are as follows. Out of 10 legal practitioners assessed, reassessed, they are found to be owing 20 million seven hundred and eleven thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars and seven bututs. Out of seven medical practitioners reassessed, they were found to be owing five million three hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars and seven hundred and sorry five million three hundred and thirty seven thousand seven hundred and seven dollars and thirteen bututs. Out of six insurance companies reassessed, they were found to be owing ninety-eight million five five hundred and thirty-seven thousand three hundred and fifty-five dollars and seventy-six bututs. Out of twelve hotels reassessed, they were found to be owing 
$439,503,816 CI and 98 Bluetooths. Out of seven consultants and engineers reassessed, they were found to be owing $15,263,390 CI and 93 Bluetooths. Out of eight other companies, including GSM companies, together were found to be owing one billion nine hundred and forty five million six hundred and seventy thousand and eighty one dollars point seventy bututs. Out of these companies, four of them were GSM companies, which together their um, liabilities amounted to one billion nine hundred and six million seven hundred and fifty three thousand one hundred and forty two dollars. The total amount of these taxpayers reassessed, numbering 50, the total amount of liability, 50 of them are owing, amounts to two billion five hundred and twenty-five million fifty-six thousand five hundred and ninety-one dollars and fifty-seven bututs. Tariff on sales tax. The commission found during this reassessment exercise that from 2006 to date, sales tax was assessed at 20% for telecommunication services and 15% for services, service providers like lawyers and accountants. This is contrary to section 142.3 of the Income and Sales Tax Act, which provides for the rates ranging from 18%, 15%, and 10% respectively. We have found no law to support this departure from the Income and Sales Tax Act. When asked whether the law had been amended to reflect this departure from the law, the Commissioner of Domestic Tax remarked in her testimony of the 1st of March 2012 that there was a gazette that gave effect to it. The gazette, when produced, was found to have increased the tariff for payment of sales tax for others from 10% to 15%, but made no provision on change of tariff for telecommunication services or its increase from 18% to 20%. The Commission finds this very disturbing that tax authorities would depart from provisions of the law without any legal basis and in non compliance with Section 237 of the Income and Sales Tax Act, which requires that any amendment for any rate and any monetary amount set out in the Act be amended by regulations. Loss of revenue on the domestic tax. By the evidence before the Commission provided by the GRA, we found that there is a total outstanding areas of tax owed by individual taxpayers as of December 31, 2011, which amounts to 313,198,987.75 bututs, bearing in mind that taxpayers are being wrongly assessed on assessable income instead of declared income as have been noted above, the amount, this amount could be higher. The total outstanding areas of tax owed by large taxpayers as of December 31, 2011 is $231,042,228.56. This amounts to a total round figure of 500, 544,241,000. $216.24 bututs. This figure, though astronomical, given the nature of our economy and our tax base, does not fully reflect the extent of tax arrears owed to the state. In sum, the above revealed that in most instances, a serious case of tax evasion on part of the selected taxpayers is shown. Overall, the analysis and reassessment conducted showed that a total of 50 taxpayers reassessed had a total tax debt of income sales and PAY taxes, which collectively amount to two billion five hundred and twenty-five million fifty-six thousand five hundred and ninety-one dollars point fifty-seven bututs. Further, when a reassessment of 14 selected capital gains taxpayers was conducted, they were found to be jointly owing three million. $838,106.80. During the inquiry into DOT checks issued, the Commission limited its scopes to the inquiry of checks issued to GRA domestic tax by taxpayers. A summary of the outcome of this exercise found that dishonored checks unpaid 
for that period between 2007 and 2011 totaled to 21 million four hundred and twelve thousand eighty five dollars and fifty three bututs extent of loss of revenue during the inquiry the commission was to some extent able to ascertain the extent of loss of revenue from tax evasion and failure to pay the proper tax due the outcome of the inquiry show a total loss from 50 selected taxpayers reassessed on income sales and PAYE taxes amounted to over $2 billion and over $3 million for capital gains tax of 14 transactions of sales of leasehold property. The evidence before this commission shows an estimate of 250,000 recorded taxpayers. The commission considers that if a reassessment was conducted on each existing 250,000 recorded taxpayers, the extent of the actual loss would be phenomenal. Though our mandate did not extend to duty waiver, we consider duty a vital part of revenue collected. Therefore, when our inquiry stumbled upon losses incurred from duty waiver in the amount of one billion two hundred and eighty six million two hundred and twenty three thousand five hundred and ninety five dollar C point ninety four bututs between two thousand and eight and two thousand and eleven, the commission felt it needed to be noted. Impact of the Commission on Revenue Collection. The Commission found that the level of revenue collected rose following the establishment of the Tax Commission. A comparative analysis was done of the evidence presented to this Commission, which shows a growth in revenue collected. According to the evidence based on the statistics provided, the Commission made an estimate of the impact it had on revenue connection between November 2011 and March 2012 in the amount of $328.1 million. And having discounted increase in revenue for GDP growth by 6%, the Commission arrived at a round figure of $308.4 million of revenue generated as a result of the establishment of the Commission. Overall observation. The overall observations of this commission during its inquiry includes the following. The detailed observations are contained in the report. First, the commission considers that the Income and Sales Tax Act is robust and all encompassing and therefore requires little amendments. Rather, we observe that the tax officials are not properly sensitized on the law and government is not properly utilizing the provisions therein. During the proceedings, the Commission's inquiry led to information volunteered by GRE management that they are on the verge of implementing a value-added tax. The Commission considered that given the overwhelming evidence that the current practice in GRE's tax administration is wrought with serious deficiencies, that they need to be fully understood and corrected, a leap to a new tax regime on tax administration would be premature. During the proceedings, the Commission noted that some legal practitioners, by their admissions, have never paid sales tax. Others have admitted they have not been paying their taxes. The Commission observed that GRA have been receiving post-dated checks for payments of taxes made in arrears. This practice, the Commission considers, ought to be discontinued. The Commission particularly observed during proceedings that some taxpayers paid most of their taxes by personal checks. For example, one legal practitioner out of $95,000 he owed a sales tax, $90,000 he was paid in check payment. There was no evidence before this commission that said check were honored. A GRA audit report dated the 12th of November 2009 assessed him and found this same legal practitioner and found him to be owing $502,884.54 and bututh including interest and penalty charges for the periods between 2006 and 2008. The evidence showed that the witness paid only $198,775 in November 2011, being arrears for income tax. He then proposed to pay the outstanding amount, which was for sales tax arrears by installment, and attached to that proposal were post-dated checks for said payments. There is no evidence that said outstanding amounts have been paid up. The Commission observed through its encounter with four named officials of GRE that they have no current knowledge on tax collection, revenue creation, the law itself, and administrative skills to strategize on revenue generation for the state. From the evidence of the Commissioner General and Commissioner Domestic Tax, 
It is understood that they rely solely on residual knowledge on tax administration and revenue collection strategies, which are clearly out of date. They are deemed to be clearly incompetent to man the positions they hold and properly supervise their subordinates. The Commission also observed a number of inconsistencies in the records emanating from taxpayers' files from GRA. Some taxpayers were declaring expenditures that they deducted from their declared income in order to arrive at accessible incomes without providing any supporting documents for such expenditure. During the inquiry exercise, the inquiry and investigations of the Commission also led the Commission to activities within the Customs Department. And though there is insufficient evidence for this Commission to make definite pronouncements and solid recommendations, the Commission found evidence of under-declaration of goods facilitated by Customs officials to reduce taxes to be paid on said goods, thereby causing loss of revenue to government. We therefore recommend the setting up of an inquiry into the level and magnitude of loss of revenue which ought to be generated to the state at the customs department and the corrupt practices perpetuated by officials therein. The inquiry also led us to evidence of loss of revenue through the issuing of duty waivers. This I have highlighted earlier. And the commission found that between 2008 and 2011, government lost over $1 billion in duty waiver, for which there is no adequate data to sufficiently justify the granting of. We therefore recommend a proper inquiry into the extent of loss of revenue from duty waivers, why such a loss is this huge, and why it is not being curtailed or controlled. The Commission observed on the issuance of dot checks that Central Bank as banker of the Gambia, which is responsible for supervising the banking industry, does not appear to have instituted adequate measures to stop the rampant malpractice of accepting payment of government revenue by personal check. Up to 2011, the total amount of bounce checks amounted to over $21 million, which could have been completely avoided if certified checks were accepted for payment of taxes. The Commission observed that some of the properties that were subject to payment of capital gains tax inquiry were allocated by government of the Gambia at minimal cost. These properties were in, in turn sold off for a large amount of money, and yet a minimal sale amount was declared for the purpose of tax evasion. The Commission considers that this ought to be looked into. Recommendations. The Commission, following its inquiry and findings, made a number of recommendations which are contained in the report, but I shall deal briefly with some. The Commission recommends the conducting of proper training for all GRA staff on Income and Sales Tax Act. The Commission further recommends the, enf the enforcement of Section 181.5 to the letter and where def of the Income and Sales Tax Act, and where defaulters refuse to pay, they would be prosecuted in accordance with Section 182.2 of the Income and Sales Tax Act. The Commission recommends that the GRA embarked on a nationwide sensitization on the legal requirement and the importance of payment of taxes and prepare and compile a simplified tax booklet summarizing relevant provisions of the Act for taxpayers. The Commission further recommends that the GRA embarked on nationwide, countrywide registration of individual and business taxpayers to ensure proper record keeping and widen the tax base. Commission further recommends the abolishment of receipt of payment of post-dated checks. Commission recommends that government recovers the outstanding tax liability in the, of income sales and PAYA taxes of the 50 selected taxpayers already reassessed, amounting to over $2 billion, and further recover the outstanding liabilities of the 14 capital gains taxpayers reassessed, amounting to over $3 million. Commission further recommends the dissolution and replacement of the current GRA board and to take action on matters recommended in the report. The Commission recommends that government conducts a wholesale purging of the GRA management as recommended in this report. The Commission recommends the prosecution of named persons in the report, including GRA officials found criminally liable to the findings of this Commission. Commission further recommends the further inquiries to be conducted on specific areas recommended by this commission in the report, particularly a forensic inquiry into the activities and affairs of GRA authority, its board, and management on corruption. In summary, 
This commission of inquiry was set up to inter alia inquire into tax evasion and ascertain the extent of loss of public revenue deriving mm -hmm. therefrom and the role paid, played by taxpayers therein. During this inquiry, the commission limited its scope to number of taxpayers called upon to produce evidence for payment of income sales, POI, and capital gains tax. Initially, the commission had sought assist assistance of GRE, which is the body established and responsible to collect revenue in the Gambia. However, this request exposed a number of anomalies within the GRE in terms of poor record keeping, poor tax administration, gross incompetence, and negligence. As a result of these shortcomings, the Commission adopted the approach of requiring taxpayers to provide evidence of their payments of taxes. From the evidence obtained, it was difficult to decipher whether the tax paid were accurate. The GRA was again invited to assist in the exercise of ascertaining whether the correct tax was paid in order to ascertain the level of tax evasion, if any. The officials again failed in this exercise. This resulted to the Commission co-opting two junior staff from GRE who worked closely under the supervision of the Commission's two technical commissioners to conduct a reassessment exercise on selected taxpayers. The outcome of this exercise exposed a great flaw and anomaly in the assessment methodology adopted by GRE in assessing taxpayers for their taxes due. This as a result has deprived the state of a large amount of much needed revenue. Given the shortcomings that were exposed on the part of GRE officials, the Commission found that most of the revenues due and owing to the state are not received because of the nonchalant and negligent attitude of GRE staff. Rather than inquiring into tax affairs of taxpayers, the Commission's inquiries exposed so many procedural and administrative flaws within the GRE, which if not immediately addressed, will continuously cause a great loss of revenue for the state and the outstanding liabilities owed may not be recovered. Following the reassessment exercise of selected taxpayers, and within the scope of our mandate, the Commission found a high level of incidence of tax evasion on the declaration of taxes, wrong or non-assessment of taxes, resulting to a large amount of loss of much needed revenue by the state. It must be stated that the outcome of this inquiry is just the tip of the iceberg on the incidence of tax evasion in this country. It is hoped that the findings of this Commission will be considered and its recommendations implemented. It is also hoped that another commission of inquiry be established to inquire into specific group of taxpayers to ascertain whether or not there are instances of under-declaration and the level of said under-declaration of income. It is further hoped that the, ta the permanent tax commission would be established as a check on the mandate of GRA, thereby greatly reducing the problem of tax evasion or under-declaration. The Commission considered that if the relevant authorities, including the GRE, are to able to recover the outstanding liabilities from the named taxpayers in this report, it would ease the current financial burden that exists on the state. I thank you very much for your attention. I would like, with the permission of His Excellency, to call on you to present your report. Mm -hmm.